Meat Boy is back. Today we're making a carnivore version of a chicken fried steak. And traditionally, you pound out a steak really thin, you bread it with some breadcrumbs, which is wheat, which is a problem. Then you have a milk and egg batter, which is actually carnivore, back into the breadcrumb. And then after you fry off the steaks, you take the fond, what accumulates in the pan from the frying, and you add a little bit of milk, put some flour in that, and then you have a nice gravy. So we're gonna use a couple culinary techniques and substitutions to make this carnivore. Overall, I think it's a delicious, healthy, approachable recipe that doesn't use too many ingredients. The steaks we're using today are some of the sirloin steaks from Frankie's Free Range Meat. These are four to five ounces and really nicely portioned out. This is gonna be perfect for us to pound thin. Of course, we're seasoning with salt. Uh, this is some of our Finlandia grass-fed butter we have on Frankie's Free Range Meat. By all means, I would just get local raw butter if you have access to it. For the breading component, we have some raw milk from a local farm, some farm eggs, and some Parmesan cheese that we're gonna to use to substitute the breadcrumbs. Very nutritious, and this is where a lot of the fat soluble vitamins in the meal are coming from. Of course, when it fries, it's gonna absorb some of the butter, which has additional fat soluble vitamins, and just in general, you know, steak, great source of protein, B vitamins, amino acids, and certain minerals. Uh, for the gravy, uh, since we don't have flour to thicken it, I'm actually going to use cream as opposed to the traditional milk. And I'm just gonna add a tiny, tiny bit of uh, beef broth to add a little bit of flavor. Uh, of course, this is raw from a local farm. Uh, make your own if you can. I'm just not making beef broth right now. It's pretty labor intensive. And this is some colatura uh, we have on Frankie's Range Meat. It's basically garum fish sauce. Uh, this can add a little bit of depth of flavor uh, to the gravy if you so choose. Uh, so let's get these steaks pounded out. Let's get this cheese grated and then we'll be ready to cook. So I patted the steaks dry with some paper towels. In hindsight, I should have grabbed some filet mignon for Frankie's range meat. It's a bit more tender, easier to pound out, but sirloin is great, ribeye is great. Really just any steak that is already, you know, fairly thin and, and properly sized. So I'm gonna use parchment paper and we're going to pound this out a little thinner. Uh, you wanna go for a quarter inch thickness traditionally, but if you like your meat rare, medium rare, you might not even want to pound this out much at all. Yeah, and part of this isn't really getting this that thin. It's more about making sure the meat is even. You see how this is a bit lower than this over here? All right, that looks good. We got our steaks pounded out to about half inch thickness. Uh, for the Parmesan cheese, you want to grate this on the finest grating possible. Uh, you could do it, you know, I guess on a thicker one if you really wanted to, and it wouldn't make that much of a difference. Uh, but for presentation and getting the breading to stick, go as fine as possible. Most of our prep work is done. All we have to do now is make the wet batter for the chicken fried steak. So we're gonna take our one cup of milk. I'm gonna crack two of the farm eggs in here. And then I'm going to put about maybe a teaspoon of salt in that because this is gonna be how I'm seasoning the meat. I'm not putting salt on the meat. I'm not putting salt in the breading. We're gonna put it in the wet mixture. Whisk this up. You could add garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, black pepper, a bunch of different seasonings to this if you'd like. And it would definitely be more approachable, more traditional uh, to the average person. Maybe two tablespoons of butter in here. Medium, medium high heat. And we're gonna take the steak, put it in the Parmesan, Really try to cover the surface here. And it wouldn't really be unhealthy if you use like high quality organic breadcrumbs, uh, by no means, but this is certainly more nutritious and less inflammatory for a lot of people that are having gut issues or are trying to avoid wheat. So from the Parmesan, we go into the egg mixture, trying to be gentle to not get too much of that Parmesan off, and then back into the parm for a second dip. And most recipes call for breading this twice, but I'm sure you could go, you know, three or four times if you wanted to. This looks like it's gonna be plenty of cheese. The difficult part is gonna be getting this cheese to stick to the steak as it cooks. 
you know, with a lot of these carnivore recipes, when you're substituting ingredients, the, the real main thing you have to do is just be gentle uh, with the product because the texture and ease of making a traditional recipe isn't there. And the Parmesan tends to clump up. So between steaks, you just wanna break it up a little bit with your fingers. I'll do the same thing. First coating, nice and light. Don't really try to pack anything on it. Even shake it off a little bit. Nice and gentle into the egg again. And then when we go in this time, we really want to cover it. You know, I was in Whole Foods the other day and they had some organic breadcrumbs and organic panko breadcrumbs. So that's probably a decent option. You know, I mean, I was looking at the ingredient list and they do have a lot of additives. So if it was like homemade breadcrumbs with your own bread, that's one thing, but that's a little labor intensive and difficult to do. So we want to kind of pat the Parmesan cheese into the steak. So it stays, and our pan's heated up. The butter's actually browning a little bit. We'll put this one in, nice and gentle. And we'll put this one in as well. And I actually wanna turn the heat down a little bit because the cheese will burn very easily. Maybe even take this off the heat for a second. Now, I'm not too worried about the internal temp on these steaks. The main thing I'm worried about is getting the crust at the bottom to set without overcooking it. And you guys can even see, it looks almost like the cheese is kind of sticking in the pan a little bit. So we'll see if we could get this to, uh, to stick on the steak. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna leave it at a medium heat for a minute or two. I'm gonna really try to get under there and scrape it to make sure it doesn't stick. All right, so when I shake the pan, it's kind of stuck, which I'm a little afraid about, but let's, let's see how this goes. That's actually not bad. You can see it was like peeling off a little bit there, so you definitely wanna be really careful with this crust. So we'll take these out. So now we have all of these drippings and caramelized pieces in the pan. If you wanna cook more steaks, like we have that other steak we have to cook, you wanna refresh the pan because if you put that steak in this pan now, it's just not gonna cook properly. There's too much crust and bits. It's, it's not gonna crisp up evenly. So what we wanna do now in this pan is make the gravy. Put a little bit of beef stock in here. Maybe about a quarter cup. Scrape everything up. And I wanna boil off that beef stock. Okay, that looks good. So now we're gonna put in a little bit of heavy cream. Maybe a quarter cup. I don't have that much steak here. So this is basically your gravy. You, you can reduce this to whatever thickness you would like. Uh, that's the difficult part of not using flour. You can and use up quite a bit of liquid to get this thick enough. But all that really means is an extra, you know, five minutes on the stove. Gravy has thickened up a little bit, and that's how we'll serve it. I'm sorry my taste tester, Gina, is not available today, but Frankie Boy will have to do. So let's check the temperature we got on the steak. And this is pretty much a perfect rare in the middle. So it could have definitely gotten a little bit thinner on the steaks if we wanted to. I mean, it tastes like you would expect, like you fried a bunch of cheese and put it on a steak, and it's actually pretty good. I would say this isn't actually that close to a traditional chicken fried steak recipe in flavor or texture, uh, mainly because you have so many strong flavors from that Parmesan cheese. It's still delicious. The gravy is really nice. And again, if you don't like Parmesan cheese, you probably want to substitute a milder tasting cheese or or maybe just opt for some organic breadcrumbs or something of the like. Uh, so as we showed earlier, all of the ingredients for this are actually on Frankie's arranged meat. We have the butter, the Parmesan cheese, as well as the steaks. But I hope you guys try this out and let me know how you like it. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you do want to support me, you can check out everything available on frank-defano.com. 
We will be doing a live stream later at around 3 p.m. Eastern time on my second channel, Frank Tufano. Uh, so I'll see you guys there. Thank you.